The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. One he gave five talents, to another two, and to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made five, made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come share your master's joy. Then the one who received one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter. Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my friends. Let us give thanks to God once again that our blessed Lord in his mercy gathers us together that we may glorify his name and be filled with his presence. The gospel today, of course, is a gospel that relates to the end of the world. In order to understand this parable, you need to understand that the master, of course, represents God. I think we all realize that naturally when we read this, that the master represents God and that the three servants are us and that we are each given gifts in our lives and those gifts have to be multiplied for the glory of God and at the end of our lives we will stand before God and present to him the good or the bad the nothing that we have done so we have to have that overarching understanding in order to perceive the mystery of this parable when I look at this parable I would like us to examine, in particular, the third servant, the worthless servant, in order for us to understand more what he did wrong so we can switch it around and not make the mistakes that he made. I count three mistakes that he made, which I would like us to talk about this morning. First of all, I think that his primary mistake was failing to understand relationship. Let me give you a little example of, of this. When I was in high school, I was studying Spanish, and many of you know that I speak Spanish. We have Spanish Mass every week. After 20-some years of being a priest, we're ministering in the Hispanic community. I speak Spanish. But 
my initial efforts to learn Spanish did not go well. I entered into Spanish class as a, you know, a high school student, and immediately I said, I do not like this. I don't like studying Spanish. I couldn't stand the class. I wanted to get out. I couldn't wait till the year was over so I could drop the Spanish language. And the reason for that principally was because of the teacher in my Spanish class. I just didn't like her and she didn't seem to like me either and it was boring and dreadful. She did not inspire me at all to want to learn Spanish. Now a few years later when I went to college, I entered into Spanish again because I had to have a language requirement for my degree. And the teacher was amazing. I remember his name, Dr. Celestino Ruiz. He was a great teacher. He was excited. He loved the Spanish language. And I immediately was on fire with the desire to learn Spanish because of the admiration that I had for him and the way he taught the class. So the difference between my freshman class and my college class, the material was the same. I was the same person. The difference was I did not like and I had a poor relationship with my high school teacher. But the college teacher, I admired him and I had a great respect for him. And because of that relationship with him, I loved studying Spanish. Spanish became like a word game for me. It was like a living crossword puzzle where all day I could think about what is the word that fits into this category in Spanish. Now the point I'm making with all of this, this little story is that the difference was relationship. Having a relationship motivated me. And I think that's the first problem with this third servant. He does not have a relationship with the master. The other two servants, you see this sort of pride in the master. Well done, good and faithful servant. But the third servant, he comes forward and he says, I knew you were a demanding man and therefore I hid the money. You see, he's afraid of the master. He doesn't have a relationship with him. And because of that fear, lack of friendship, lack of love, he's unable to do what he should do. Obviously, this relates to our spiritual life. What is your relationship like with God? Do you fear him? Do you think of God as a demanding taskmaster? Or is Jesus Christ your friend? Because if we have a relationship of friendship and love with God, our Lord Jesus Christ, then it is that relationship of love which motivates us to do that which we are called to do. My dear friends, the first requirement of making sure that we don't become that third servant is for us to be in a real relationship of love and friendship with our God. I think the second problem that I see in this third servant, the failed servant, is that he is also afraid of failure. It's kind of interesting. He receives this one talent and he's afraid to engage in trade and work in the market, right? He doesn't even invest it with the, the bank in order to get interest. He's so afraid of failing that he goes and buries the money, which is interesting because the master could have done that before he went away. He could have dug a hole and just buried the money. He is afraid of failure, therefore he doesn't even try. Obviously, this also is an aspect of our spiritual lives. Sometimes we're so afraid of failure that we don't even begin to engage in the process of growing in holiness and service for the Lord. I think the Lord, my dear friends, this morning calls us to be daring. Do not be afraid. Do something that's a little wild in the service of the Lord because if you enter into the battle, you do not enter alone. We don't have to be afraid. We never have to fear because God is with us at all times. The Lord will assist us in the battle and in our weakness and failures, God will supply. This, sec this third servant was afraid of failure. He was afraid and therefore did not do what he was called to do. My dear friends, let us not be afraid. Rather, trust in God and his providence and his care for us so that we may find spiritual success. 
Finally, I think the third problem with this servant is, and there's not so much textural evidence for this, but I think it's an experience of our human living, is that he may well have not appreciated that he was given less than the other two servants. He was given only one talent. Doesn't this happen to us a lot when we look around and we see people who have more than we have, that we might become jealous or upset? We look at other people's lives and we think they don't have the suffering that we have. We look at other people, we think that they move from one joy to another without carrying the cross. And in our jealousy, we compare ourselves with one another and that jealousy prevents us from realizing what we have actually been given. This man was given one talent, which is an extraordinary gift. But because it wasn't what other people received, he may have been jealous and angry. This parable calls us to be grateful for what we have received. The gifts that we have received are amazing and wonderful. We should have a heart of gratitude. When we realize all the blessings that God has poured upon us in our lives, that gratitude allows us to be courageous, to be a little wild in our work for the Lord. And then, living in this relationship of God, we undoubtedly will bear fruit. And so, my dear friends, today as we gather to celebrate this Mass, we perceive the three mistakes that this third servant committed. We pray for the grace that we may not make those mistakes. Rather, that we ourselves will have a true and living relationship of love and friendship with God our Father, that we will not be afraid of failure because we will trust in the providence of God and his grace in our lives, and that we will appreciate the many, many gifts that God in his goodness and love has poured into our hearts so that at one day, at the end of our lives, as we stand before God our Father in heaven, we will hear also those words that we long to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant.